And joining us now here on In the Circle, she's a former All-American standout at LSU, had a great uh, play, playing career as a two-way player at LSU, and now the new assistant coach at McNeese. I speak of Shelby Sinceri. Uh, Shelby, uh, welcome to In the Circle. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. How does that feel now, that new title, assistant coach? It's awesome. Um, it's such a blessing, you know. Halfway through my college career, I realized that I would like to be a college coach, and I felt that it was my calling, that that's what God had put me here to do. Um, and so I changed my major. I went with it, and I was just, I prayed for it, um, and he answered my prayers. You know, I am so blessed to be at McNeese, and I've loved my time here so far. What was it that changed your mind halfway through that you said, I want to be stay involved and be in coaching? So I always did lessons um, and I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed giving lessons and just seeing the hard work pay off for all the girls that I did lessons with. And I coached a team. Um, I coached the Marucci Patriots one summer. And I, in doing that, I realized that there was nothing greater than like just seeing them succeed and seeing them be rewarded for their hard work and um, just being able to invest in them in them as human beings, you know, I think that that's one thing that I had all growing up was coaches who really truly loved me as a human and not just a player. And it continued when I got to LSU, you know, um, our coaches at LSU are awesome and they really invested in me as a person. And I knew that they set me up to succeed when I got out of LSU and I stopped my playing career there. Um, and so just having that experience with um, that travel ball team really just showed me that like I wanted to be a coach and you know I didn't know if I wanted to do the college level I wasn't really sure which one I wanted to do but as I kept thinking about it and I just kept praying about it I knew that like God would just lead me in the direction that I was supposed to go and um, that's really kind of how I got to where I am. So take me through the process this off season here uh, and how you landed at Mc McNeese. So I was playing professional softball this summer with the Vipers and one of my teammates um, is friends with the coaches here and they were looking for a pitching coach and I was like well I mean if you throw my name out there and if they won't like you know if they want to move forward they can you know it was just kind of like it was a running joke at first like I actually didn't think that anybody would hire a 23 year old fresh out of college um but I got the phone call from Coach James and talked to him for a little bit. And he was like, okay, I'll give you a call in a couple of days. So a couple more days went by. He gave me another call. We talked for um, an hour or so, a couple hours. And then he was like, I want to fly you down. I want to get you on campus. I want to get you in an interview. And I was like, all right, cool. So it was a very quick turnaround. Um, I had to work through my professional um, schedule, kind of like talk to my um our manager at the Vipers and kind of just work with the time. So I, um, we had a game on a Thursday night and it ended up getting rained out. I flew out Friday morning. Um, I think it was the first July 1st. Um, I flew out that morning at like 6 AM from or Orlando. Um, you know, I flew to Dallas and then from Dallas, I flew to, um, Lake Charles, I got here about nine ish. Um, and so I was here all day that day. Um, went around, saw the different facilities, saw the different things, talked to the important people, um, got to meet some awesome humans. And then we went to dinner that night, talked to him the next day, went to breakfast. Um, and I flew back. And then on July 4th, I called him and told him that I would love to have the job. Unbelievable. Uh, I'm always curious because obviously LSU and McNeese played often. Did you have interactions with Coach James when you were a player? I never did. Nope. <laughs> so I never had any interactions with him um, or anything. I mean, I knew who they were. Like I knew, um, I knew him and the assistant. Um, I had heard of them before. You know, the other assistant played at ULL, so um, we're kind of all um, from here. So. so uh, take me through it. When did you reach out to coach Beth, Beth Tarina for what, once this all kind of evolved and what kind of advice has she given you? I did reach out to her. So I actually reached out to all of our coaches, you know, they all gave me a very different perspective. Um, coach gave me more of like the, the business standpoint. We talked about the salary. We talked about the pros and cons of like 
physically like being here, being a coach, what it was going to mean. Um, you know, I called coach Dobson and coach Dobson gave me like the dad advice, the father figure in that. Um, and then Lindsay just kind of gave me like the, like the Jesus perspective. Like it was, it was here. It was set in front of me. You know, I wasn't going out. I wasn't hunting for it. It just kind of came to me. Um, you know, it was an answered prayer. And so I got all three, like three completely different perspectives from all of them. And, you know, at the end of the day, all three of them ended up telling me that if it felt like it was home and it felt like it was where I was supposed to be. And I felt like that this is where God was taking me then to run with it and to see what happened, you know, um, you never know what's going to end up happening until you take the, take a leap of faith and take the risk and go for it. And I think that was something that really was comforting to know that all of them had my back and all of them were behind me 100% whatever decision I made whether I took the job or not um they were behind me and they were going to be happy for me either way and I think that was something that was comforting because I was supposed to go back to LSU and I was going to be a grad assistant and I was going to student coach with coach Beth um and I you know so I called her I talked to her about it and um it was just, it was very reassuring that they had my back and they were going to be happy for me either way, whichever way I went. And so that was kind of really like, she talked out the pros and cons with me. We talked about the good and the bad, what to expect. Um, she talked about if I was ready for the business side of coaching, the recruiting, the film, um, all kinds of like the fundraising, all of that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, like, I was like, why not? Like, you know, I, because I am so big in my faith and I had prayed about it and I prayed before I made the decision to, and, you know, I just had an overwhelming peace about taking the job and like being here for some reason, I felt like it was exactly where I was supposed to be in that moment. And I can honestly say that I haven't questioned it since I've been here. It's been awesome. It's been a great experience so far. And I am so excited to see what comes. How's the interaction been with the players and the pitchers you've inherited? It's been awesome. Um, you know, this, I'm their third pitching coach, um, in a couple years. So, you know, it's hard. I knew it was going to be hard to gain their trust coming in and like gain their respect. Um, but because it is my first coaching job and I am new to this, but they've all been very welcoming. They've all been very coachable. And I think that's something that is important. Like, you know, I'm day by day, I'm steadily gaining their trust. I'm steadily, um, trying to figure them out as human beings, not just as players, you know, that's something that is big to me, like is investing them as investing in them as people, um, because that's what I had and that I can 100% say that's one of the main reasons that I was so successful at LSU is because I knew that at any time anything was going on, like I had people there that loved me as a person and I was far more than just a player to them. And that's exactly what I want to be as a coach. Like, uh, yes, softball is important and we want to win and I want them to be great. But if we can't invest in them as humans, then like it's only going to go so far. And so that's a big thing that I've really been trying to like focus on is not only making them great on the field, but helping them be great outside um, and off the field. And so far they've been very welcoming. They've been very trusting so far. So I think it's only up from here. You mentioned you were playing for the Vipers when all this was going on this summer. Uh, describe the season there with the Vipers and how does this affect your playing future? Are, are you are you still going to continue to play or or, or, or what, what's kind of your future as far as that's concerned? Yeah, so this summer playing for the Vipers was, um, it was an awesome experience, you know. Um, halfway through the season, when I didn't get drafted to AU, I kind of thought my um, playing career was over, you know, and I had kind of come to peace with that. I had once again prayed about it. I knew that I was hanging up my cleats and I knew that there was something greater coming. Um, and then all of a sudden, Coach Beth was like, hey, you may have this opportunity. Like, let's talk after season. And so in the season rolled around and when we were at regionals, I did get I got drafted to the WPF. Um, and so after regionals. I kind of thought about it once again, prayed about it, um, talked to Don, which was our um, manager of the Vipers, um, you know, and it's, I played for the WPF, which is Lauren Chamberlain's um, league that she is, she had just put together. Um, so this last year was the first year of it. Um, there was only two teams, you know, we kind of just played each other. It was kind of just um, 
a season to have fun, to just be where you're at and just enjoy playing um, again. And then as we gain more teams and we start to have more teams, it'll kind of be ran a little bit differently. Um, but it was just, it was such a blessing to get the opportunity to do it. You know, I met some great humans. Um, I met some of my best friends that will literally hopefully be in my wedding one day. Um, you know, and I just think it was such a cool environment to be in. It was so different than college, but, um, there were so many great things about it. And I am a hundred percent behind what, um, Lauren is doing, trying to build this league and trying to build something great for us to, um, for, college athletes, college level players to go to after their career's done. Um, you know, it gives them another avenue to just be a light to the world, um, to play for fun, um, and to just travel the world and get to meet new people. So it was very good. You know, um, it was super exciting and I had a blast doing it, but yes, it all did happen while I was, um, in the middle of, playing so it was a bit of a challenge to kind of balance the two you know had to set up phone calls you know I had to fly down so it was a quick turnaround you know I flew back and then the very next day we played a double header so like it was crazy it was a lot but um it was so fun um I think moving forward if I want to continue to play then um I'll play it doesn't really affect much of the coaching side because our season is during the summer um so as long as I can fulfill my duties as a coach, which would be recruiting camps if we have camps um, and just being here when they need me. I think that I will continue to play as long as my body is able. Um, you know, it's something I love to do. I love to play, um, but I also love to coach. So hopefully if it's in God's plan for me to continue to play, then I'll play as long as I can. Got to play with some teammates, obviously, that you in some cases played against uh, mm -hmm. and I played other schools, got to meet some new players. I know and following, you know, Gianna Mancha, for example, of UCF uh -huh. was a teammate of yours and Iacopo. And uh, what was that like to meet some new different players from the, it from was, the deal? It was awesome. You know, um, it's funny you say that because like you always have like your thoughts about when you play against them, like you wonder what kind of person they are. And so it was really cool to get to play with them and kind of see how they are outside of softball and like, you know, um, just like who you thought they are versus like who they actually are, um, you know? So it's super cool, you know, like on the field, you put off this like image of like who you are. And then like on, like off the field, it's like, you know, like on the field, you're a competitor, like you're going to go hard, you're going to play hard, you know? And then it's like cool to see the hearts of them, like outside of softball and like off the field and just to see like the real side of them and like not necessarily the competitor and not like the hard, like the hard player you know you get to see like a fun side of them like the goofy side and so that was super fun just to be able to like meet them and like learn their hearts and like get to grow with them um you know we were all doing it for the first time it was all new to all of us so we all had the same struggles you know so it was super cool to get to play with mary and um get to play with gianna you know got to play with jocelyn so like so many players that like i played against um really it was just cool to get to play with them for once and like kind of just see see them as a human and see how they are so it was really fun it was a cool experience speaking with mcneese assistant coach shelby sincera here on in the circle how'd you get involved in playing softball oh so um my sister played softball i have an older sister she's four years older than me um so she played growing up. So from the time I was in diapers, I was at the field um, running around, you know, my dad was a coach. So my dad coached um, every sport you can possibly think of. He coached softball. He played baseball in college. He played at Mary Harden Baylor. Um, and so it was kind of just ran in the family. You know, um, I was at the field from the time I was little. So I kind of just picked up a ball and ran with it. And I fell in love with the game. How'd you end up at LSU? Um... <laughs> a lot of prayers. Um, you know, the recruiting process is so hard, um, especially when I was getting recruited because there was not an age um, where like they could, like they had to talk to you. So like now they've moved the age back to where you have to be a junior um, in high school after September 1st, we can then make contact. Um, but that wasn't like that when I was getting recruited. So I started getting recruited when I was in eighth grade. So, you know, I committed to LSU um, spring break of my freshman year. Um, I went on my first visit, which was to LSU 
in August. Um, it was the first week of my freshman year. Um, and so it was very overwhelming, but you know, I went, LSU was my first visit and I fell in love. Um, at first, I'm going to be honest, I had no idea what, what LSU was, had no idea where Baton Rouge was. And I was like, I'm not going to Baton Rouge. Like, where even is that? You know, at first I wanted to stay in Texas, you know, come from a small town. So I wanted to go small, um, went to LSU and I fell in love. The coaches were awesome. Um, the facilities were awesome. And it just felt like home, you know, and that sounds so crazy considering I did come from a small town and Baton Rouge is not small, but the people were so welcoming. Um, and they showed me right off the bat that they were going to invest in me as a person and that they were going to love me big. And I think that was one of the most important things, um, you know, so I continued to go on a couple other visits and nothing just felt like LSU, you know, Coach Beth, Coach Lindsay and Coach Dobson, um, really just made me feel like I was at home. You know, they knew that like I was from a small town. I was very shy and a very reserved person. So they knew that they were going to have to break me out of my shell. Um, and they did just that, you know, and that was part of what was so easy for me to, to commit to LSU and to go there because I knew that even though I was going to be so out of my comfort zone, it was right where I needed to be, you know, and through the recruiting process, I prayed about it. You know, I, um, there were nights that I spent like crying because I didn't know what decision to make, you know, and God led me in the right direction. And my five years at LSU have been the best years of my life. And I couldn't have asked for anything better. Like without LSU, I would not be the person I am today. I wouldn't be the player I am today. And without the coaches that we have there, I don't know what, I don't know what college would have been like, you know, like I always think about, like, I hear my friends talk about other places and I'm like, you know, like, the relationships that I have with my coaches, even still to this day, like I call Dobby on a regular basis. Like I talked to Lindsay, I talked to coach Beth. Um, and so like, I just like, I have that relationship with them. That's far more than softball. And I think that was like the biggest thing that brought me to LSU. And it was like that the whole time that I was at LSU, LSU and I absolutely loved every minute of it. Do you have a favorite moment from your playing uh, 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 your career at LSU? When, when you look back at your career, what's a moment or two that stands out? That's hard. Um, there were so many great things. There were so many fun um, moments, you know, and a lot of my favorite moments are off the field. It was the team bondings that we did. It was um, like going to Houston. We always take a beach trip and like, you know, we do like team bondings. We get to see the real side of each other, you know. Um, I think that's something that's so important. You know, one of my favorite things that we did at LSU um, was we were at our beach house and we were doing a team bonding and it was kind of like, what do you want to be remembered for? Like when it's all said and done, like, what do you want to be remembered for? And, you know, just getting to see people be real and getting to see your teammates say things that like they've never really said out loud was such like an overwhelming experience, but it was so good. And like, you know, like in doing that, we got to talk about people that like, maybe like you wouldn't like necessarily like wasn't your best friend, but you got to talk to like talk about them in front of everybody and like really just like tell them like kind of how you felt just like, you know, like after hearing what they said and just like reassuring them and like reiterating like how they are as a human being. And that's something that like will stick with me forever. All of our team bondings that we did, all of our um, you know, whether it was deep stuff where like we had to be real and we had to be vulnerable, or if it was like the lighthearted stuff, like my freshman year, we went canoeing, um, in Houston and that was a blast. You know, this last year we actually did, um, like an optical course type thing, but it was like, it was at LSU. It was kind of like, like a high, like it was like a heights thing. And like, I'm terrified of heights. It's my, one of my biggest fears. And so, you know, like getting to like overcome that fear with my teammates, you know, and I was with two teammates who wasn't like, they weren't my best friends, like, you know, but I mean, obviously we were friends, but you know, like having, I was with Cindy Peterson and Jordan Perkins and, you know, just having them like, kind of just like step up and like reassure me that like I was going to be okay and like I wasn't going to die you know was a huge thing for me and like through that we created a relationship that like may not have been created if we didn't get to do that team bonding so you know like most of my like favorite memories have to be off the field um I think if I had to say a favorite memory or a couple of favorite memories like on the field one would definitely be my sophomore year um when we won the Texas Tech um, 13, 
13 yeah. inning game. Yes, that was awesome. That was such a cool experience, you know, um, just getting to see so many people like contribute and like so many different things and like, you know, having those people come through and big moments, you know, that was just so awesome. And then I have a couple, you know, like this year, like Sydney Peterson hit her first home run. That was so cool just to be able to like experience, you know, Danica Coffey hit a home run, you know, um, and it was a grand slam, you know, that was like so cool to be able to experience, you know, so like, I just think I have so many that like, it's hard to pick, but just like seeing all of my teammates succeed and like seeing them like get to like experience like their first home run or their first shutout, you know, MB throwing her um, complete game, like perfect game, you know, like it was just like, it was so cool. It was such an awesome experience, you know, to be able to experience that with her. So that's a couple. I know I, I covered uh, a lot of your uh, games and media availabilities, uh, especially during the Zoom era. So it was, a lot of times it'd be coach uh, and then you or you then coach talking. <laughs> what, uh, what was it like being around her and being in that bullpen with her? Because you're not the first former player to go into coaching in, in her that's played for her. You're not even the first pitcher that's gone into coaching, being a pitching coach under her umbrella. What what it describe the being around her being in that bullpen because you obviously picked up things you're going to probably use here mm -hmm. on your when now and you as a coach yeah for sure being in the bullpen with her was such a cool experience you know um it wasn't always sunshine and rainbows you know um but it's never going to be there's always going to be hard times there's going to be hard days but she's so knowledgeable and i think that like over my five years i just tried to take as much as i could from her because I knew that eventually I, I would wanted to coach, you know? And so when I kind of had that turning point that I wanted to coach, you know, it was, um, it was just trying to soak up everything she knew pitching wise, just as a head coach, just in general, you know, it's hard to be a pitching coach and a head coach. And, you know, also like her being a mom at the same time, like I learned so much from her and it's just like, I like, wouldn't trade that for the world. Like, um, that lady is one of the most important people in my life and she has taught me so many things and without her, like I would not have made it. I would not have functioned. Um, and so it was so cool just being able to be in the bullpen with her, really just hear all of the knowledge that she has, you know, um, just seeing a different side of her, um, seeing the mom side also in the bullpen she had to juggle it all and it was so cool just to see how like we'd be in the bullpen and like a kid would run in you know and she would have to be a mom but she was also being the pitching coach at the same time and she was also being the head coach at the same time you know so it was really cool just to see how she balanced everything and just the knowledge of the game like um just as far as softball goes like there's so many things that I took from her and um I'm sure I will be calling her here shortly um whether that's in tears because I feel like I'm not qualified or just to tell her, thank you. You know, I'm so thankful for her. I'm so thankful for everything she taught me. And without her, I would not be the pitcher I am today. That's for sure. And I wouldn't be able to be the coach that I am if it wasn't for her and just all the knowledge and all the love that she gave. Um, you know, it's, that's one of the biggest things I think is what helped is like, I knew that day in and day out that she loved me unconditionally and she was pushing me as hard as she did because she knew she saw something in me. And I think at the end of the day, that's what, that's what you need in a coach. You need someone who's going to love you unconditionally, but they're going to push you to be the best version of yourself, um, on and off the field. Now, everybody that knows Beth and I've known Beth for a long time, uh, and I've teased her about this, but I'm the same way as she is, but I have to ask you. She's a pretty super, uh, superstitious person. So what superstition did you pick up from her? Because I've talked to everybody. Everybody says they picked up something from her from a superstitious standpoint. Um, I'm not sure yet. Since we haven't started <laughs> playing, I don't know. I have never been a superstitious person. Um, but I, I don't know. You know, you got to do whatever it takes. Um, give, me I think one, give me one superstition she told you. Like, you got to do this while you're playing. She, um, I don't know that she ever told me one. I know like the whole hair, keeping the hair the same. Like if it was braided one way and we were winning, we were going to keep it braided that way. Um, I think one of the funniest ones was one of my years. I don't remember which year it was, but, um, we, I think it may have been my junior year, the year after COVID. Um, I don't know what was going on. I don't know if we had been losing. I'm not real sure, but she came in the bullpen and she spilled her, she spilled her coffee before a game on her clipboard. 
and we ended up like winning like we like went crazy that game and so every game after that she would like purposely like spill her coffee on her clipboard because that's like you know that was the thing and so I just think it she made it light she made it fun like the superstitions were so cool um and I think it just was like I don't know. We'll see what I take from it. I'm not sure. I've never been a superstitious person, but at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. Spilled coffee. How many games in a row did that last? How does that like, what? what? That's a new one. I've not heard that one. I don't know how many games it lasted. It was just funny. Cause it like she did, she accidentally spilled coffee. And then like, she was like, if we win, we got to do it again. So sure enough, the next day we came out, we did it again. <laughs> Moral of the story, just be careful what you do because you never know it could work and then you're forced to do it again. Yep. Uh, wow. Uh, what's it been like getting to know Coach James? And, and obviously the high standards at McNeese, which just like LSU, it's all about postseason winning conference championships, which I'm sure also attracted you there. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's been awesome getting to to really just grow with them and learn um, all of them. You know, um, Coach James is awesome. He's so knowledgeable. Um, and I know that I'm in good hands here. Um, so, I mean, it's been awesome. It's been cool just to kind of hear how he thinks about the game versus where I came from, you know, like there's a lot of similarities, but there is some differences. And I think that's part of being a coach, like where you go, like not everything's going to be the same. And I think that's cool. I think that I'm, I'm getting to learn a different way of coaching. I'm getting to learn a different way of thinking about things, how things are done. Um, and so it's been so cool just to hear like the knowledge that coach James and um, coach Shelley and even coach Corey like have like it's just it's a different perspective but it's so cool just to sit and listen and, like sometimes I just sit and I just listen I'm like in awe just because I'm like wow I never thought about it that way um, so it's been super cool they've been awesome they've been so welcoming so loving um, and they have invested invested in me so much and they've made it to where like I I know that I can come to them for anything. Like if I need help, um, if I don't know what to do, if I'm having a bad day, you know? So that's something that's been very, very good for me too. You know, coming from a place where I was invested in, you know, and coming to another place, you don't know if you're always gonna get that, um, but I have so far. And that's something that's been so cool. A couple last things, as you now evolve here in the fall, you get to know your players, they get to know you. What could be some of the keys for you, for both, for all parties here in the next few months, as you get into fall ball, and then before you know it, the season to be ready to go for uh, the twenty twenty three season. Um, I think really just hitting it hard. You know, um, we're gonna implement a couple of new things. You know, I'm trying to, um, just help them get better any way I can. You know, um, I think that it's gonna be a big key for them to be able to be like, um throw different things, throw different speeds, you know, um, I think just and honestly, the biggest thing is just building trust. Like when we fully get trust built and they start trusting me more and more each day. And as we go, I think that that's something that's going to make our pitching staff, um, complete, you know, um, we're going to have several arms in the circle this year, which is going to be exciting. You know, we have a couple of freshmen who have come in and really stepped up and that's going to be cool to see, um, see how they thrive out there. Um, you know, and then we have our returners who are working just as hard and, you know, they're getting better day by day. And I just think that's so cool to see how welcoming they were and just like how eager they were to be co like to co be coached and to learn and to learn new things. You know, I bring something different to the table, um, something that they haven't learned before. And I think that's what it's all about. It's about being coachable and teachable and they're just ready to learn. And I just think that's something that's going to help us go far. You were a two-way player. I'm curious, how is that going to help you as a pitching coach, you know, from the standpoint that you have both perspectives? You've been, you know, the pitch as a pitcher, but also as a hitter. I think it's going to help me. Um, I think, you know, when watching the film and planning um, how we're going to throw certain people, I think it's going to be cool that I do, and it's going to be, um, it's going to help me um, that I do have that other perspective, that I do have the hitting side of things um as well like I do have a hitter's mind also as well as a pitcher's mind so I think it could be very helpful and very beneficial that I do have I did do both sides of the ball and I, I was successful on both sides um so that's it, I think I'm excited for what's going to happen how did that evolve that you became a two-way player was that always something you wanted to do I mean it just how did because a lot of you know as you know there's a lot of pitchers now that just want to be a pitcher but mm -hmm. you did you always want to be a two-way player 
Yes, there was, there was no, I was not going somewhere that didn't let me be a two-way player. That was a thing. That was the first thing that I, one of the first things I asked Coach Beth when I was on my visit is like, are you going to let me hit and pitch? And she was like, if you can do both in the SEC, you're going to do both. She was like, I want you in my lineup. And so that was like a big thing, especially going into my freshman year, knowing that we had Carly and Allie, um, you know, and we had MB. I knew that, I mean, Carly and Allie were phenomenal and, you know, MB was going into her sophomore year and she had got some experience her freshman year and she was going to be that much better you know I knew that it was going to be hard to get a be in the starting rotation um so I knew that if I wanted to be on the field and I wanted to play I was going to have to figure out how to hit and so that was the goal going in you know like I was going to figure out how to hit be in the lineup every single day and then you know like continue to work on pitching and if I got a shot to throw then I was gonna I was gonna take advantage of it and I was gonna do the best I could um so there was never an option of whether I was not gonna pitch and hit like that was one of the questions that I asked on every visit I went on um and it was just like I don't I don't know I think that i kind of think I'm a better hitter than I was pitcher. And so I was not given either up. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, you did pretty well on both, uh, both ends there uh, from that standpoint. And, and I think, I remember I asked you like during one of the media availabilities, boys, you were playing, you said it, it really kept you in the game that you, you, you kept you thinking throughout the game, just discuss, you know, the, the, is that a big part of it too, that you liked? Yes, for sure. You know, like um, I've never been a pitcher only, so I don't know how their minds work, but I know that like, it was very, it was very cool to be able to like go on the field, go on the mound and like have a pitcher's mindset. And then once I was back in the dugout, like I was hitter all the way, you know, like, so whatever happened on the field, it was gone. It was done with like, it was over. I couldn't do anything about it. You same thing at the plate, like whatever happened at the plate, once I was back on the mound, I was done. Like there was no like taking it back and forth and like, oh, I struck out. So now, oh my gosh, I'm going to suck on the mound. You know, like there was, it was a, a good way for me to split like the offensive side versus the defensive side. And I think that was something that helped me. I also think being a two-way player just helped me on both sides of the ball, you know, cause like as, as a pitcher, I could think kind of like a hitter and I was like, mm, like, you know, and then vice versa, you know, sometimes it's a downfall and sometimes it was very helpful um, just kind of based on how you used it, like, you know, and I really learned at LSU to use it as an advantage, you know, like I, I learned so much and I became so knowledgeable of the game, um, that it was an easy way for me to use it on both sides. And it really did help me just to like disassociate like the pitching side from the hitting side. And I think that's part of the reason that I was so successful was because I did do both and I was able to, separate the two so well at some point and this will be my last question for you mcneese and ellis you're gonna play because they mm -hmm. play every year as you know well as, as well as anybody prop could be in the postseason as well as well as regular season so at some point you're gonna go back to tiger park have you thought about what that's going to be like and how do you want you know lsu fans and people that watched you play to kind of remember you why because that'll be a unique moment when you whenever that happens mm -hmm. It's going to be such a bittersweet moment. You know, I've thought about it. Um, and I think just stepping back in Tiger Park again is going to be so overwhelming. And it's going to be um, just like, I don't even know how to explain it. I don't have the words. I'm very excited for that day. Um, you know, I think it's going to be overwhelming. I think it's going to be a bittersweet moment, you know, stepping back into Tiger Park on the other side of things, you know, in a different uniform, in a different color. Um and ultimately, I just hope that, you know, everybody that's there, like, knows that I gave my absolute all to LSU and that every single day I stepped on the field, like, I wanted to represent them the best way possible. And I just hope that once I step back on the field in a different uniform or in a different color, you know, that they still love me for who I am and um, what I gave to the program because I gave everything I had and I would not trade it for the world. Um, I loved every minute at LSU. It was the greatest thing that I could have ever done. Um, it was the greatest experience that I've had in my life. And those five years at LSU, I made some of my best friends, um, who will be in my wedding. I've, um, uh, my coaches will be at my wedding, you know, um, they're going to be in the big moments of my life. And that's all I could ask for, you know? Um, and so I hope that the fans are welcoming, but obviously I know I'll be in a different color. So <laughs> When it's go time, it's go time, and we're not friends anymore. We'll be friends after the game. 
Sure. <laughs> well, I, I think they'll welcome you well in you know, the pregame, and I'm sure it'll be a lot unique and fun. And uh, we're, so I think a lot of people are excited to see what you do there at McNeese. McNeese is always a great program, and I know you got high expectations there, conference championship expectations, postseason expectations, and uh, I know you'll help them out. Uh, hey, congrats on this opportunity, and uh, thanks for taking the time. I know it's a busy time as you're adjusting there, and always enjoyed watching you play and talking to you and looking forward to seeing you in here as coaching, and uh, thanks for doing this. Of course. Thank you so much for having me.